In the last step, you created two waves with some data and named those waves timeval and yval. Now let's create a graph to display that data. First, choose the Windows New Graph menu item. The New Graph dialog will appear. This dialog comes in a simple form that is fine for most people and a more complex form that allows you to create complex graphs in one step. For now, we'll use the simple form. If you happen to see a button named Fewer Choices, click it. If you wanted to use the complex form of the dialog, you could click the More Choices button here, but let's continue using the simpler form. From the list of Y waves on the left side, choose Y val. From the list of X waves on the right side, choose Time val. Now click the Do It button. Igor has created a simple graph which plots the data from the y val wave on the y axis against the data from the time val wave on the x axis. Now I'll show you how to modify several properties of this graph to make it represent our data better. First, position the mouse cursor directly over the trace in the graph and double click. This brings up the Modify Trace Appearance dialog. You could have also selected the Modify Trace Appearance item from the graph menu but it's usually quicker to just double click on the trace. In the dialog, choose markers from the mode pop-up menu and select the open circle from the menu of markers. Then set the marker color to blue. Once you've made those changes, click the do it button. Your graph should now look like this. Now let's make some changes to the bottom axis on the graph. The easiest way to do this is to move the mouse cursor over the bottom axis until it changes into the cursor you see here with an up and down arrow. Once you get this cursor, double click. This should bring up the Modify Axis dialog. If you get another dialog instead, click the Cancel button and try again, making sure you get the cursor with up and down arrows before you double click. If it isn't already showing, click on the Axis tab. Choose On from the Mirror Axis pop-up. Now, click the Auto Man Ticks tab and click the Minor Ticks checkbox so that it is checked. Then click the Ticks and Grids tab and choose Inside from the Location pop-up. To make changes to the left axis, choose Left Axis from the Axis pop-up menu in the top left corner of the dialog and repeat the same steps. You may have noticed that as we make these changes, the graph updates automatically. This is because the Live Update checkbox in the upper right corner is checked. If you have a really slow computer or very complicated graph and don't want to see the changes as you make them, feel free to uncheck this box. In that case, changes would only take effect when you click the Do It button. Note that whether or not Live Update is enabled, any changes you make here won't be saved until you click the Do It button. If you click any of the other buttons at the bottom of the dialog, such as Cancel or To Clip, the settings changes you made won't actually be applied to the graph. Now click the Do It button to apply all of these changes to the graph. Your graph should look like this. Let's make a few more changes to the graph. Once again, double click on the bottom axis of the graph to bring up the Modify Axis dialog. Click the Axis tab and uncheck the Standoff box. Choose the left axis from the Axis pop-up menu and do the same for the left axis. Now click the Do It button. Notice that some of the markers now overlap the axis. The axis standoff setting, which we just turned off, pushes out the axis so that markers and traces don't overlap the axis. You can use Igor's preferences to ensure this and other settings default to your liking, as I'll show you in a later tutorial. Maybe you also want to force Igor to use nice values for the tick marks at the upper and lower limits of the axis. That's easy. Double click on one of the tick mark labels on the bottom of the axis. When you do this, the Modify Axis dialog reappears and the Axis Range tab is showing. Choose Round to Nice Values from the pop-up in the Auto Scale Settings group that originally read Use Data Limits. Choose the left axis from the Axis pop-up menu and do the same thing and then click the Do It button. Notice that the limit of these axes now fall on nice values. 